Hi everyone, and welcome to part six of a video series I'm doing of an ATV trip my friends and I did across the province of Newfoundland in September of 2018. On this particular day, you're going to see us driving from Corner Brook to Robinson's. To get around Corner Brook with an ATV, you basically have three options to use an old snowmobile trail that we call the bypass trail. Some years it can be not bad, some years it can be pretty muddy. You can drive the side of the highway for about 10 kilometers, or you can get a flat tech tow truck to come get you, pick you up, and take you to the trailhead. We chose the bypass trail this year, and this year was muddier than other years. We were stuck a little bit and used some winches, but you'll see all that in this video. We get up early that morning in Corner Brook and it was foggy, but it burned off pretty quick and turned out to be a beautiful day, nice blue skies. We split the group up into two groups that morning because some of us had to go to uh, a Can-Am dealer up the road to deal with a few issues that we had. Nothing really serious, but since there was a Can-Am dealer in town, we decided to go and get it fixed up. I got some bolts put in my uh, sway bar. Bruce got a boot for his front left wheel. Bob had a new belt put on his machine, and we were able to get uh, the right size screws for Paul's muffler on his CF Moto. Bruce has friends that live very close by, and they came and picked us up while we were waiting for our machines to be worked on. They made us breakfast, gave us coffee, and they have a pontoon boat in their property uh, faces the Humber River. They took us out for a ride in the pontoon boat up uh, up and back through the river and showed us where Marble Mountain uh, Ski Hill is. Talk about your hospitality. Thank you very much Jack and Rory. We really appreciated it. The nice people at Rivers End Motel uh, let us extend our checkout time, and then we picked up our, our gear, put it back in our machines, drove across the street, got some gas, and then uh, the trail that takes you through Corner Brook is almost right across the street from the Rivers End Motel. It's uh, pretty convenient to get on it. Uh, it kind of snakes through town. Uh, some of it can be muddy, and then uh, when you get to the end of it, you have to ride the shoulder of the road here for a few hundred meters. It's not really that far. And then you're going to see this uh, yellow trail that I have marked out on my map here. We get on that. That's about 10 kilometers. And then uh, it takes us to the trailway, the main trailway, uh, which is in blue here. This is a steep hill. Yep. I'm doing it just in case. Pretty rocky. Goat Trail. 
So this is the beginning of the uh, the bypass trail. Also, we call it the goat trail because it gets rough in some places. But um, that rough section isn't really all that long. But you know, it's long enough to hold you up if it's if it's yeah. muddy enough. Uh, I would suggest beginners don't bother taking this trail. And uh, what you should do is get a tow truck to take you through that area. It's not very far, and it wouldn't cost you all that much. But and it would also save you some time. But if you're like us and you like the mud and stuff, then uh, take the trail. They better. They're supposed to. They're supposed to go through this stuff. Yeah. And it's mus. It's messy up here now. Let's see how I make out. Ooh. I might get stuck here. Yeah, I should have. I should have. I should have turned around. Can I hear anybody? Probably would have been better off to go straight. Now we knew it was going to be rough going because the other guys that left a few hours ahead of us all went through here and uh, phoned us and told us that it was going to be rough and uh, advised us to either take the highway or get towed and we ended up coming this way anyway just because we wanted the video and uh, we didn't get the videotape then but they did get some cell phone vo uh, footage so I'm going to show that in this video as well. If we had uh, spent a few minutes walking the trail here we probably would have been okay because we we would have got a much better idea of a good line to take where the ground was solid. Mine makes the same noise sometimes. Oh, oh. Here. Yeah. I think you're okay. There you go, you're out. I'll get the winch. It, it looks pretty solid. I'm stuck behind those trees in the far left over there. Yeah, I go, yeah. Once you get up that way, I'll probably be able to get my winch to you. Yeah. yeah. Don't let this section we're driving there through here scare you off from doing this trip because this is totally optional. We go. do go. this, but you don't have to do this. You can totally avoid this. What's that stop? You hit stop there. To the left a bit. You might as well wait. Give her, give her. It didn't help me much that those Maxxis Bighorn 2.0 tires had over 6,000 kilometers on them. Yeah, use the, use the winch. There's that Can-Am clicking sound in the front end. The Visco lock system works pretty good in most situations, but uh, not when you're in heavy mud like this. It's a bit worse sounding. Yeah. I guess it's my turn to try and get out. Paul's going to pull my winch out for me, hook it up to Bruce's machine.
gonna, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna drive right over it. There, I'm out. Give her a bruise. This long straight stretch here was a pain. It was almost everyone just made it through. We all got hung up just at the end because there was kind of a steep angle on it. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Same as you. Same thing. Winch time. <laughs> give her. Give her, give her, give her. Oh, oh, stop. Stop, stop, stop. You're stuck. You get hung up on the bottom. Yeah, you get hung up bad. You're pushing mud like a snowplow. You'll never get out of that. No, no, just stay. No, just get your winch out. Well, we're technically still on the goat trail for a few uh, more miles, but uh, the rough stuff, the worst of the rough stuff is over. It's kind of hard to tell uh, from the perspective of the video here, but this section of trail Bob is going through now is uh, really, it's kind of steep up and then down, uh, and then it, it's actually, uh, and it actually, uh, leans quite far to the left which you can't really uh, you can't really tell here to the right he may, he may just, looks like low gear tear <laughs> looks like low gear tear this is still part of the goat trail or the bypass trail uh, you know it looks rough in some places it's not it's just slow going uh, there's roots and stuff but anywhere here where you see it looks like deep water or mud it's fine it's lots of ground it's really solid it's, uh, it's fine to get through you just got to take your time to get through it that's all and we are now back on the rail bed. Because of all the time we spent at the dealership and going through that mud hole back there, we're hours behind. We're, I don't know how many kilometers exactly, but the, we usually don't see the sun setting like that, or not setting, but that low in the sky until we're usually close to where we're going. And we've barely just got on the rail bed. So that means we're gonna have to pick up the pace for quite a while, uh, fewer stops. And uh, that's fine, that's no big deal. And uh, we're gonna get in after dark tonight, which we usually don't do, but just because we were so far behind, we're gonna end up uh, getting in after dark, but not not too late. I do. This lake I'm going by now on my left is George's Lake, and I always love driving by this lake. It goes on for a lot of kilometers. And some of the trees in the left here are growing up where they weren't years ago, so it's a little harder to see in spots, but it's still a really pretty uh, section.
driving really old Honda. Oh my god. We always pull into this Irving gas station here in uh, Stephenville Crossing as it's right next to the trail. And I'll give you a quick recap of uh, what we've done so far today. Uh, we left Corner Brook, took that orange goat trail, got ourselves back over to the uh, the main rail bed, which is in blue, went along George's Lake, went through Galance. Now we're down to Stephenville Crossing uh, to get gas, as you can see here in the map. And then uh, we still have a bit of a way to go to get to Robinson's. We're spending the night at Pirate's Haven. We actually spent two nights there this year and they took us for a tour on an extra day. We uh, took kind of a down day and they took us to a beautiful spot uh, and which you'll see in tomorrow's video. When you left Stephenville Crossing, you used to be able to cross an old rail bridge that you see in the background there, an old train bridge, but uh, that's out of service now. It's in too bad a shape, so you have to come up to the highway here and uh, run the road for a little bit, just a short distance, uh, a few hundred meters, and then you can get back on the trail on the other side. Oh, more sand dunes. Oh, look at that. Look at that sky. Now I'm stopping to get a picture of that. Well, it's only a short distance. Watch what? Haha. <laughs> We're almost to the uh, this big sand hill that we like to climb uh, when we go by it. And uh, those of you who watched our video series from last year might remember uh, Paul got stuck going up there about part way up. Because, uh, he was driving a Kawasaki Terex 4 at the time, and he forgot to turn his machine or put it into four-wheel drive. And all week he kept saying, when do we get into the sand pit? Because he wanted to burn to the top uh, in one try this year. Paul didn't need a four-seater anymore, so he uh, sold his machine and bought a, a CF Moto Z Force 1000. Four high. Yeehaw! He does, yeah. You got her. How was it? <laughs> Just there. I'm gonna get a picture. Yeah, where's my camera? It's on my neck. Oh yeah, it was good. Easy. So it's solid. Oh, you came up, I missed you. Oh, my engine brake is doing the whole job for me. It's almost stopped, I mean, it's working that well. That's not, yeah, I actually get a touch on the gas. I actually get a touch the gas. Really? Wow, the engine braking on this is amazing. Yeah. Engine braking looks awesome in those things. Whoa, you come over that hill, it looked like you were drifting a little. It's a little disappointing watching these later on after you do it because they never seem as steep in the video as it does when you're there in person. Wicked. <laughs> yeah. Holy man, that's... Oh, there's people on the trail up here. I'm turn off my lights, or my high beams and my overhead light. They're off, they're 
they're off on the side of the bushes, but they're just standing there letting us go by. I'm gonna go real slow. <laughs> they're hitchhiking. <laughs> Where are you guys going? Oh, we're just going. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, excellent. Good night. Yeah, kind of a cool view. This is the first time I've done any uh, trail riding there at night. And uh, we always try to get in before dark just because there's so many uh, animals and so much wildlife that could be in around the brush and stuff and walk out on the trail. And they especially like to come out at night if we can. This year, of course, is an exception because we uh, were a few hours late leaving. What? No. No, it's not. In this part of the province, the alder brushes growing alongside of the trail have grown up so much and over the top that with the overhead light on driving through here, it felt like a tunnel almost going through here. Actually, sometimes in the day, it can feel the same way. And uh, we were just a minute away from Pirate Haven here. So as usual, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button and the notification icon to get notified whenever I upload a video. Stay tuned for part seven, where the friendly folks at Pirate Haven take us on an ATV tour through some of the Newfoundland backcountry we've never seen before. You're not gonna wanna miss it.